The turquoise waters of the Caribbean call out to Gulf's rising stars on this episode of Esto es PGA Tour Latino America. Bienvenido a la República Dominicana, Boricua. We take a shot at the sporting life at Casa de Campo. Before relaxing islandside with a piña colada at the Dominican Republic Open. Bienvenidos a Panama. Then we take in one of the wonders of the modern world, the Panama Canal. How about a dive contest? And enjoy some of the region's freshest seafood at the Lexus Panama Classic. The first half of the season wraps up under tropical sunshine. Salud, Salud papá. Esto es PGA Tour Latinoamérica. Esto es PGA Tour Latinoamérica. Hola, soy Julio Santos de República Dominicana. Y yo, Rafa Campos de Puerto Rico. Vamos a seguir entonces por ahí. Estamos aquí para presentarte la parte más histórica de la República Dominicana, que es la zona colonial. Vamos hacia Casa de Campo, donde vamos a tener una competencia de tiro. Vamos a probar la suerte y los pulsos a ver quién se gana un traguito esta noche en la marina. Me encanta la idea, me encanta la idea. ¿Tú sabes disparar? Claro que sí. Ah, pues yo todavía no sé. O sea, ah, me va a tener que explicar aquí cómo hacer esto. Nada, no, si aquí tenemos los mejores instructores. <risa> Vamos allá. Bueno, pero no hay que. Venga, Antonio. Antonio, explícame un poco. No, no, no. ¿Cómo se hace esto? ¿Qué es lo que vamos a hacer aquí? Este es el esquí. Un sim, como ustedes pueden ver, es un semicírculo de ocho posiciones. El plato le sale cruzado. El, el plato alto le sale cruzado hacia el poste. Los potes son los extremos. El bajo hacia el otro pote. Salen dos sencillos y también se puede tirar un plato doble. Perfecto. Ahí, tienen que darle... ¿Y es fácil esto? Un, un poquito... Creo que nos toca disparar a estos platillos, ¿no? Uy. Le pegaste. No. Pero sube un poquito más la escopeta arriba. ¿No te gustó eh, esa? Esa. Vamos. Uy. No, no, tiene que seguir. <risa> tiene que hacerle el movimiento, el swing. ¿Y no puede salir más lento? <risa> no. <risa> ah. Bien, cool. ¡Vámonos! <risa> Yo pensaba que jugar golf era difícil. Qué <risa> loco. Ah. Que me emocioné porque pensé que no le iba a pegar a eso. Vamos. Aquí cogiendo clases de golf ahora del maestro de, de disparar, ¿no? ¿eh? Este va a ser mi próximo entrenador aquí. ¿eh? Uy. Uy. Bueno, Julio, yo sé que por lo menos le pegamos esos últimos dos patillos que nos tiraron, pero de lo que tengo entendido, yo creo, creo que le di un poquito más que tú. Así que ya tú sabes lo que es. Parece que tú habías practicado por ahí, no sé si en Puerto Rico o en la playa o... No, ni debe ser, yo calladito aquí. Ah. Antonio me da unas clasecitas Antonio. antes de venir aquí, ¿ok? Ok. No, pero ya tú sabes, me debes por lo menos una piña colada esta noche. No, claro, con mucho gusto. Hasta una cena si quieres. No, Ay, pues. lo pensaremos. No, perfecto. No. <risa> The Dominican Republic Open took place on the famous Teeth of the Dog course at Casa de Campo. The layout ranks in the top 100 in the world and features seven holes along the Caribbean Sea. Course architect Pete Dye says they weren't built by him, but by God. American Rick Cochran III has been a model of consistency this season. In his six events, he's finished runner-up three times. Playing in the second to last group, Cochran had a three-shot lead with two holes to play and appeared to be cruising toward his first win. But a bogey on 17 narrowed the gap to two over his playing competitor, Michael Budacavoli. On 18, Budacavoli had his final chance to narrow the gap. I hit a perfect six iron, and I didn't see it till I got up there, but obviously it must have come pretty close to going in and left myself a fairly easy putt for birdie. The tap-in birdie meant Cochran needed par for the win, but his second straight bogey sent the tournament to a playoff. 
After matching scores on the first two playoff holes, Cochran was the first to putt for birdie on the third playoff hole. Budicavoli missed his birdie to win and tapped in for par. That left Cochran's par putt for a fourth playoff hole. After being down six shots with seven holes to play, Buda Cavoli had his first PGA Tour Latino America title. I feel like I've gotten myself close to the lead with nine to go. There's a lot of other times where I was right there going into the weekend and couldn't get it done. You learn from those mistakes and I was finally able to pull through and get the win today. One win doesn't guarantee anything. It has to be consistency. And when I mean, you see it from Rick, he's, he's finished second a handful of times almost. And it's, that's, it's that type of play that's gonna get you in the top five at the end of the year. Obviously build off this event and try to get myself in the top five and see what happens. Up next, we go seaside and dig into a big plate of Dominican food and have a wild five questions with Max Scodro. Oh, a kick! A kick! Welcome back to Esto es PJ Tour Latino America. It's time to get to know a PJ Tour Latino America player a little better by asking five questions. This week's guest is American Max Scodro. I guess growing up it'd be my parents. I mean, uh, it's not like it's not like they ever forced me into golf or anything like that. But once you know, I decided like this is what I want to do. I just I couldn't ask for a more supportive group. And I mean, whenever I need something, they're there. When I'm, you know, last year was a bad year. I was really down. They were there to pick me up. I had never even been to Latin America before this tour, so it's not like we never grew up. You know going to the Dominican or anything like that. If I play well on this tour, I move up. If I play well on web.com tour, I move up. And it's just a much clearer path than I think it used to be. For me, it was an obvious choice to come down here. I didn't think it was going to be this amazing. Maybe some carbonara pasta. That's my favorite. And then down here is, is really simple. It's uh, ojo de beef from a, from a Buenos Aires steakhouse any day of the week. Give me some, give me some papas fritas on the side and my bottle of Malbec and I'm set. I am very superstitious. Uh, I mark with the same quarter. I won't change my golf ball in a tournament. Uh, my theory is that if it doesn't want to get lost, I'm not going to lose it. I won't wear a new shirt during a tournament. It has to, it has to be uh, proven before. Uh, I don't know, there's a lot, more, more, than I, more than I know, they just pop up in my head. I can, I can make it look like I'm pregnant. <laughs> my wife is embarrassed, but it's pretty good. It's about, I don't know, six months? Right? What'd you say? Oh, it kicked, it kicked, it kicked. <laughs> Esta comida nosotros, de nosotros es típica, igual casi que la de Puerto Rico. Sí, es verdad que casi idéntica, que arroja, bichola, viste, pollo, claro. fritura. Sí, allá. sí, cuando oh. yo estaba jugando por allá, este, fui, buscamos un restaurante ahí al lado de, de un mosque, y encontramos ahí un... ¿En Puerto Rico todo eso? En Puerto Rico, sí. Y Ay, es lo mismo casi. Yo sé, por ejemplo, los tostones allá en Argentina y eso, como que no, no saben que existen y eso, pero... No, oh. sí. Pero esto es riquísimo. Totona, mi hermano. Entonces, esto es de casa. ¿Cuánto tiempo tú llevas ya aquí en el tour, Julito? Llevo dos años, tres, desde mi tercera temporada. Eh, pienso que ha sido una buena experiencia. Principalmente conocer los países de Sudamérica para mí, que no quedan tan lejos del Caribe. ¿Cuál te gustó más? A mí me gustó más. Me, me gustaba mucho en Buenos Aires. Y también me gusta. Me gustó donde jugamos hace dos semanas, Uruguay, de los países más lejos. Por el, creo que es el mejor clima que tiene. ¿Qué tú crees que es lo mejor que, que nos está haciendo el tour para nosotros? Para nosotros creo que el desarrollo de juegos. 
Tú sabes que la competencia que tenemos es... Ha subido mucho ha la competencia. Ha subido mucho. Ahora, ¿no? Estamos casi a nivel de, de web de account. Pero sí. ese es donde queremos llegar, ¿no? A que claro. sea un tour de Por fin, ahora, competitivo. Ahora lo bueno es que tenemos, ¿sabes? Un, un paso. Bueno, ¿cómo, ¿cómo te gustó la comida? No, estaba riquísima. En verdad estoy llenísimo, sí. llenísimo. Yo creo que, que hay una deuda que, que tienes que, pues, que, que pagar. No, claro, como un golfista hay que pagar siempre la deuda. Eh, un traguito, unas piñas coladas. Eh. Yo, creo que, yo creo que es una buena opción, ¿no? Ok. Eh, ¿No puede pasar? Por favor. por favor. Pues por supuesto. Esto lo paga este señor. Ok, aquí tiene el señor, que la disfrute. Uf. Gracias. Señor. Aquí tiene ese Gracias, aquí. Bueno, Julio, gracias por todo y espero, espero que tengamos una buena semanita acá. Y nuevamente, muchas gracias, papá. Gracias a ti. Salud. Gracias. When we return, it's off to Panama for a behind the scenes tour of one of the world's amazing structures. Esto es Panamá y esto es PJ Tour Latinoamérica. Bienvenido de Panamá, bienvenido de Panamá, bienvenido de Panamá, turista a ti The Panama Canal serves many as a gateway to the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. The ship canal is nearly 50 miles long and it allows maritime trades a shortcut for traveling. Bienvenido a Panamá, mi nombre es Omar Tejera. Rick Cochran from Kentucky. Y aquí estamos en el canal de Panamá disfrutando de una de las octavas maravillas del mundo. Vamos a conocer sobre el canal, su funcionamiento, aprender un poquito de lo que es esta maravilla. You go. Oh, you first, man. Come on. <laughs> aquí estamos en la torre de control con mi amigo Jaime que nos va a explicar un poco sobre todo lo que hacemos aquí. Eh, gracias. Esto, bueno, vamos a comenzar con lo que es la torre de control. We're going to start with the control tower. And this is what we have right now. And what we have here is the old control board, which dates back to 1914. It's one of the first computers ever built. Now, this is not uh, an operating right now. This is not operating, actually, it's disconnected. We have the new computerized system at the back. Okay. But if that fails, this has to be connected and we need to operate the locks using this. And it will be, it will be completely functional. Oh, yes, yes, it's That's still neat. at its best. As you can see, we have to do keep this under maintenance. Yeah. Um, oil, all this. You always have it. You always have it in good conditions. Huh? Even though it's old, it's always working. Huh? You can see all the small electrical motors, relay switches. Wow. No, I never thought this existed. I mean, hey, look how it's dry. It was 45 two minutes ago. <laughs> it's incredible. Ooh, we're pretty. We're pretty tall right here, huh? <laughs> I wouldn't want to pull here. No, no, I'm holding on to the rail. <laughs> that is all pretty. If I go, this rail's going. <laughs> <laughs> how about a dive contest? After a few cervezas, After a few cervezas? <laughs> so how many ships go through each day? Bueno, dicen que cerca de 39 barcos al día. Esto, aproximadamente 14 mil y tantos al año. Y eso ingresa entre 6 a 8 millones de dólares por día. I think it's just crazy that it takes eight to 10 hours to go through the whole process of this ship. 50 miles, huh? Over there, getting to the Caribbean Sea. So, chequeamos el canal de Panamá. Espero que te haya gustado. Tengo un poco de hambre. ¿Qué te parece si vamos al casco viejo y comemos algo? That sounds ¿Así? good to me, as long as you're buying. Let's go. <laughs> the Lexus Panama Classic took place in Rio Alto, Panama, at Buenaventura Golf Club. This Jack Nicklaus design course opened in June of 2012 and provides another world-class venue for the tour. The course brought out the best of a trio of Argentine players. Armando Sarlenga and Emilio Dominguez held positions in the top three after 54 holes. It was countryman Julian Etulain who sat atop the leaderboard by two shots. Me sentía cómodo con el swing, me sentía pegando bien y ayer cuando me fui a dormir con dos golpes de ventaja sabía que que podía ser mucho o podía ser poco, depende, depende de la paciencia que, que yo tenga durante todo el día. 
Etulane won his first NEC Series PGA Tour Latino America title with a thrilling one-shot win at the 2013 Lexus Peru Open. In the final round in Panama, a birdie at 16 gave him a two-shot cushion and a more relaxed walk-up 18. Etulane closed out a 69, becoming the seventh player with two wins on PGA Tour Latino America. Y obviamente que, que era uno de los objetivos quedar entre los cinco, cerrar la primera parte de la temporada lo más arriba posible y bueno, por suerte, por suerte se dio todo bien. On the strength of his fourth top six finish, Colombian Marcelo Rosso regains the top spot on the order of merit at the end of the first half of the season. The top five at the end of the year, Los Cinco, earn advancement to the Web.com Tour. Hola, soy Alan Wagner de Argentina y estoy acá para brindarles un par de consejos muy útiles antes de su práctica para salir a jugar una vuelta de Yo les recomiendo una vara para los pies y una vara para la cara del palo. La vara de la izquierda vendría a ser para los pies, que va a estar alineada una seis a ocho yardas a la izquierda del objetivo y la vara de la cara del palo va a estar alineada al objetivo. Lo que quiero con la vara de los pies es que los pies estén paralelos, las rodillas, la cadera y los hombros, todos en un mismo plano. Y con la vara del, del, de la cara del palo simplemente sería una guía para alinear la cara del palo. No presten mucha atención a aspectos técnicos del swing antes de salir a jugar una ronda, que simplemente estén muy atentos a su ritmo, a su fluidez, a darle mucha fluidez al swing de golf. Eso los va a ayudar mucho a pegar mejores golpes durante la ronda. Coming up, we're off to the seafood market for a fresh caught lunch. And we look back at some moments from the first half of the season. Oh my God! Oh my God! So Rick, here we are, the Bicheria area, yeah. good place, per, uh, Mercado de Marisco, you know, the yeah. market, yeah. and this is outside the uh, Casco Viejo. Fortunately, I mean, we're in the Caribbean, yeah. it, rains. it rains, it rains, <laughs> it rains, it rains. So we're trying here, it's a uh, ceviche de corvina, which is sea bass, sea bass. We got octopus, and let's try, let's try, let's try, let's give it a try. Salud. Salud, papa. And Fred, how was it growing up here versus back in the States? When I was growing up, I actually played soccer in the league so I was like 16 years old. That was like the passion. Everybody knew yeah. soccer and everything. I raised like I told you. But my father used to golf. So I always got a little hooked into it. Yeah. I was getting bigger. Yeah. There's more golf courses. More access you know, to more practice. More access. So there's obviously there's more kids, you know, every time I go to the They're range. Growing up. Yeah, every time I go to the range, you see little kids like this, just yeah. being balls. And it's fantastic, yeah. you know. Yeah. They yeah. come to see you, they ask you, yeah. you know, little tips. So it's nice. Yeah, yeah. It's good to give back too, you know. Yeah. Do you want to try some octopus? Yeah, I would love octopus. I'm a little nervous, I'm not going to lie. Nah, those are good. Here you go, buddy. Here's the octopus. Oh, yeah. Oh, what's your story? How was it in uh, How was it in Kentucky? Uh, Where you go to school? How was it? It was good. I, I grew up. Uh, golf was the only thing I ever wanted to do. Went to school to play golf. That was it. Uh, graduated. Struggled a few years. When this tour kind of started getting big, I figured this is my best chance to get onto the the, the web.com web. and the PGA. And, the and I've been overwhelmed with how nice. Every place we've been in Latin America, the golf course, the people, the, the culture, I've grown to really like it. It's difficult at first, just the traveling from, from you know Kentucky all the way to Panama. Uh, and I don't speak Spanish, so it's difficult for me, but when I get on a golf course, I'm comfortable. I've been fortunate each week to, to keep kind of playing well. I go to the gym, I, I, I play golf all day, practice you know at the evenings, and then go to sleep. So uh, that's pretty much what it takes. Yeah. If you want to get it to the next level, you got to you got to work at it. And yeah. uh, 
So, I mean, I've been fortunate this year to play well, and hopefully I can keep doing it. Now, when I go to Kentucky, yeah, you got to show me how it is over I got some barbecue. If you put barbecue sauce on anything, it's good. <laughs> Bienvenidos a Guatemala. Bienvenidos a Uruguay. Bienvenidos a Guadalajara, México. Seven countries, eight tournaments, eight different winners. We've seen it all. From the sky. Oh my God. Oh my God. And underwater. At high speeds. And low. Estamos bien, muchas gracias. Let's look back at some of the best moments of the year. You didn't want to dive on those pants. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, you're out of your mind. A freaking ant. Salud. It's good, but it's an ant. <laughs> This is this a good look for me? Nah, I don't no? think it's looking good. <laughs> I can't pull it off. Smell that tire smoke, baby? That's me burning rubber. <laughs> <laughs> Esto es PGA Tour Latinoamérica. So, conocimos un poquito el canal de Panamá. Conocimos la ciudad, lo nuevo, el casco viejo, y aquí estamos en el Bio Museo. Una bonita, un bonito contraste entre lo antiguo y lo nuevo, y lo grande que está emergiendo, y lo rápido que está emergiendo Panamá. Espero que te haya gustado y que haya disfrutado un poquito de mi país. Thank you very much. It's been an honor and it's memories that I'll have the rest of my life. Sure you do. Esto es PA Tour Latinoamérica.